call the regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District Trustees to order. Uh, this is the December 15, 2016 meeting. First item is roll call. Ben Viola? Here. Nick Rico? Here. Jason Greenleaf? Here. Rob McSorley is absent. Uh, he may arrive, he may be delayed and arrive later. Uh, Aubrey Strauss? Here. Joe Carroll? Here. Um, approval of the minutes. Um, I have a motion on the November 17th, 2016 budget workshop minutes, please. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any uh, corrections, errors, or omissions? To note? I think I had a question on that one. That was the 17th? Yes. So on page 5, the, I guess it's on the reserve, uh, capacity reserve, the third paragraph, ooh, he said the user fees increased over projection, so consequently he did need to withdraw money, or he did not need to withdraw Did it? not. That should be did not. Okay. okay. I think that's all I have. And just following on that same line, oh. the next line down, withdrawal monies should be from, not form, the fixed asset account. Oh. Yeah. Good catch. Good? Money. Yeah. Any other corrections? All those in favor of adoption of the minutes is corrected. All in favor and opposed. Uh, all right, the approval of the minutes of the November 17, 2016, regular monthly meeting. So moved. Second. <coughs> Any corrections, errors, or omissions to note? I didn't have any. None. All in favor? None opposed. All right, next item is the superintendent operations report. Uh, it's short this month. Uh, we have a busy agenda. Uh, a copy of the report of operations for the month of November is included in the packet. Our average flow for the month was 1.23 million gallons per day. Our effluent quality was well within our permitted limits. We averaged 96% uh, BOD removal and 97% TSS removal uh, with concentrations of 9 and 11 mineral grams per liter respectively. We have transitioned to wintertime operation mode, which consists of uh, running in a single train operation, providing conventional treatment. Copy of the pump station flows for the month of November are included in your packet. We had some high flows at the industrial park and Libby Road pump stations. Again, these flows occurred during an extreme weather event. We have isolated these flows. Uh, and to the Libby Road pump station service area, uh, but the actual source still eludes us. Uh, we'll continue to look for the source as the weather permits. Uh, we also had some high flows at Higgins Beach and Black Point Road pump stations. We are still looking into the cause of these flows. And finally, I just wanted to report that we did get reimbursed from the um, contractor who caused the damages down on Avenue 2. Um, uh, reimbursement is $8,823.94. That's all I have on the intended report. Anybody have a question? So, Aubrey. I have another question on the DMR. I'm going to get a reputation for asking questions about the DMR. Um, under, again, grit removal column on the, the, the row for November 4th, Grit removal shows 2650, and I think that maybe was septic received, perhaps. That's it. Okay. Good. All right, we'll move on to correspondence. Um, chapter 530 certification. Um, as required, I submitted to DEP our annual 530 certification form. This, cert this form is utilized to identify any significant changes to our flow or operation that may increase the toxicity of, of our discharge. As shown in the form, we have had no such changes. Okay. No questions? That's a good thing. 
No changes is a good thing. No changes is a very good thing. Okay, old business, item A, 300 Roundwood Drive. On behalf of Halo LLC, Blaine Civil Engineers is requesting district approval for a change in use of the existing facility of Mongolian properties for the proposed Bay Capelle Salon, which will be re relocating from the current facility at 450 Payne Road. Bay Capelle Salon services include haircuts, shampoos, nails, and eyebrows. The project consists of an expansion of the existing parking lot with no work proposed on any of the existing utilities. At the last meeting, a concern with regards to the strength of the wastewater was raised, followed by a request for on-site sampling at their existing location. However, after review of the current facilities, an appropriate sample location could not be identified. Uh, with that, an internet search was conducted with regards to hair salons and wastewater characteristics. The results of the search indicates the salon wastewater is slightly stronger than typical domestic wastewater, but um, just by a very small margin. Uh, so, uh, as I had recommended last uh, month, I do recommend approval with the following conditions. Um, the salon for water use uh, will be 773 gallons per day, and approval is limited to uh, that amount of typical sanitary waste. Any future flows in excess of the approved amount or flow characteristics are subject to additional approval. Uh, the original flow allocation for this building was 160, thus 613 gallons per day, subject to the capacity reserve fee. Um, the current capacity reserve fee is 15.18 per gallon and is adjusted monthly based on the ENR. Construction cost index based on the current ENR. The co total capacity reserve fee is $9,305.34. This fee is due prior to issuance of the sewer permit and any, fl any flows above the 773 gallons per day. Or if the waste stream is found to be high strength waste, this process will be subject to additional approvals in uh, capacity reserve mm -hmm. fees. Um, provide a sampling manhole as approved by the superintendent. That one item has, was added from last month, and I've spoken with them, and they're very willing to do that. And conduct some monthly 24-hour composite samples of the wastewater, um, which will be tested for BOD, T COD, and TSS. This data will be provided to the district monthly, and the superintendent has the right to modify the sampling program as needed to ensure representative data is obtained. <coughs> um, install an inline uh, solids interceptor um, and maintain as required and then uh, they will have to re fill out an interceptor permit. Have a motion? Make a motion we approve with the conditions set forth by the superintendent. Second. Questions or comments? Yeah, uh, so on the plan we received, it, it didn't really show us. They just, for what, the sampling manual? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they provided a sampling uh, just uh, today, as a matter of fact, to provide okay. an updated plan with the sampling manual. All right. Uh, so you said that they are aware of the change. Um, in the condition of the sampling yep. manhole and by virtue of the fact that there's nobody here representing them, I assume that this in agreement with all the points yep. that, you, that you've made. Yep, I met with them actually uh, the week after our last meeting. So. Okay. All right then. All those in favor? None opposed. Okay. On to new business. Uh, Item A, 3 East Grandview Ave. On behalf of 3 East Grand LLC, Northeast Civil Solutions is requesting district approval for a change in use of the existing facility, uh, which is currently Conroy's Garage. Um, there are proposed seasonal restaurant mixed use development. The proposed, proposed redevelopment will convert the existing building to two gift shops. 100-seat restaurant with indoor and outdoor seating and employee housing on the second floor. The project consists of an expansion of the existing parking lot, a relocation of existing sewer service with an addition of two manholes and the addition of an external grease trap. I recommend approval with the following conditions. 
Capacity reserve fee is based on typical wastewater characteristics. However, the characteristics of the wa restaurant wastewater are expected to be uh, 1.7 times greater than typical wastewater. With that, a high strength multiplier of 1.7 times for the rice restaurant waste was applied. The current capacity reserve fee is 15.18 per gallon and is adjusted monthly based on the ENR. Based on the current ENR, the total capacity reserve fee is $54,283.68. Yeah. This fee is due prior to issuance of the sewer permit and any discharge above. Discharge limitations are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. The wastewater discharge li is limited in accordance to the following table and future flows in excess of the approved limitations are subject to additional approvals and fees. Uh, it's a flow limit of the 3,435 gallons per day a BOD loading of 8.27 pounds per day, a COD loading of 24.82 pounds per day, a TS loading of 8.27 pounds. All district applications must be signed by the owner, not an agent. Uh, detectable underground utility tracer wire shall be installed um, above all sewer piping in accordance with the standards, a sewer permit is required, a grease trap interceptor permit is required, a complete application associated fee shall be committed to the district at the time the permit is executed. Prior to the permit being executed, no grease trap work shall be completed. Inline food strain is required downstream for the garbage disposal, food macerator, or similar equipment that allows food waste to flow to the sewer. Uh, monthly composite samples of the combined wastewater is required, of which will be tested for BOD, COD, and TSS, ammonia, and pH. Data must be provided to the district monthly. The superintendent has the right to modify the sampling program as needed to ensure representative data is obtained. Finally, professionally surveyed electronic TO reference CAD drawings, stamp PDF of the CAD drawing, and stamp paper copy be submitted to the district on completion of the project. Thank you, David. Um, can I have a motion, please? Yes. Motion for approval of the conditions set forth by the superintendent. Second. Uh, questions? Yes, sir, Aubrey. So I was taking a look at the grease, the grease trap that was included with the application, and the first page of the technical spec sheet does not indicate whether they are or not going to use the high water anchor kit. And I would highly recommend that with the groundwater levels and, and, uh, and just the nature of the soils in that area that we require that that anchor be used to prevent buoyancy of the tank to maintain fittings. Anything else, Nick? I'm curious about the monthly composite sample. Are those going to be done? In perpetuity, or just for the first quarter, first year? Uh, it could be in perpetuity. It depends on what we find. If they, we find that the uh, the results are ver extremely variable, they'll be continued on a monthly basis. If they're fairly consistent, we'll uh, drop it down to once a quarter. If uh, we find the wastewater is not high strength, we won't, you know, eventually would require it not a lot at all. I'll, I'll, that's why it, you know, it will be adjusted according to my needs, or, or the district needs, not my needs. Okay. To ensure accurate Oops. data. Have we ever asked the restaurant to do this before? We have just started to in the last few um, uh, approvals. We have been requiring this. The reason being is just this past year, I have I've, I've found out that of the, uh, the strength of the restaurant wastewater is uh, can be quite variable and quite high. Hmm. Other questions or comments? <coughs> okay. All set. Joe, you all set? I'm all set. Okay. All right. All those in favor of the motion? Opposed? One opposed. Uh, Nick Rico opposed. Um, motion carries. Thank you. Uh, 
can I just ask a question on this? Uh, this not, not, not really sewer related, but I see that they're going to have a boarding facility as part of this for, for employees mm -hmm. upstairs, which is kind of a first for my tenure on the board here. Have they already been through the planning board process with this? Okay. Yes, they have. <clears throat> and they did that with our letter of ability to serve? Okay, next item of new business is Eastern Village, Phase 3B. Valentine Development, LLC, has requested district approval to connect and discharge into the sewer the wastewater from the 53 apartments, 51 one-bedroom and two-bedroom units, as proposed in Phase 3B of the Eastern Village subdivision, uh, located on Lot 118 of the subdivision. The proposed sewer extension work associated with 3B includes 555 linear feet of 8-inch diameter gravity private sewer system with five manholes and sewer services to each of the seven new apartment buildings. The build-out of the lot will be in three phases. Uh, previously, the district approved phase 1, 2, 2A, 2B, 3, 3A, and 4 of this project. Excuse me. I recommend approval with the following conditions. The project is within the original sewer service area. The original lot had an allocation of 52 residential dwelling units, which has been allocated to phase 1, 2, 2A, 2B, and 3. Consequently, all 53 apartments are subject to the capacity reserve fee. This fee is based on a single-family residential dwelling unit without accessory units. Any additional homes, apartments, dwelling units, or accessory units in excess of this are subject to additional approvals from capacity reserve fees. The current capacity reserve fee per apartment is $3,035.86 and is adjusted monthly based on the ENR. Uh, based on the current ENR index, the total capacity reserve fee for the 53 dwelling units is $160,900.58. This fee is due prior to issuance of the sewer permit. A uh, copy of the recorded subdivision plan depicting the amended district approval shall be provided to the district in both paper and electronic format. All sewer services shall have detectable underground utility marking tape placed approximately three feet below grade uh, directly above the pipe and tracer wire installed adjacent to the pipe. A sewer permit is required for each building. A complete application and associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Um, a sewer extension permit is also required. A complete application of that and associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Prior to being permits being executed, no sewer work shall be completed. And then finally, the uh, professionally surveyed electronic georeference CAD <coughs> drawings stamped, PDF of the CAD drawing, and a stamped paper copy to be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. A motion, please. So moved. Nick? Second. Second. Jason. Questions or comments? I guess just sort of a, a general question. I noticed that we have one location where I, I believe that our the connection for the proposed development into existing sanitary manhole one it looks like it's about eight feet deep. I'm just wondering what the elevation of the water line is right there. I'm assuming it's five or six and we'll be below it? Yeah, we'll be below tough. it, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, the uh, sewer lines within the apartment complex itself, are these, are these going to be district-owned or private? They are private. Okay, so the main and the street will be ours? Correct. And they'll be tying into that? Yes. Um, okay. Any other questions, comments? This is, is this the final phase of this project now? <laughs> Have we seen everything? Or is there more? There's more. We okay. went to the planning board this week, I think, for another phase, right? I don't know. I think they did. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. All those in favor? None opposed. Thank you. <coughs> All right. Uh, Item C, adoption of the 2017 budget. 
David. Uh, the proposed budget for 2017 is included in your packet. Last month we held a budget workshop where the trustees and I went through the details of the budget, including each line item that makes up the total budget. <coughs> the budget summary for you, um, is before you is a summary of that budget with no changes. Overall, the proposed budget reflects a total increase before capital expenditures of $111,000, $422, uh, $422 from the 2016 budget, which translates to a 3.58% increase. Their operating budget, including capital expenditures for fu uh, funded from operating revenues, is up uh, the same amount, $111,422 from the 2016 budget, uh, with an increase of 3.46%. The total budget, including capital expenditures, is $3,565,918, up $155,422 from the 2016 budget, an increase of 4.25%. Can I have a motion for the adoption so of the 2017 budget? Second. 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 Yeah. Aubrey, I think Aubrey had the yeah. quicker reaction time. Um, questions or comments on the <laughs> 2017 budget? No? Okay. Um, all those in favor of adoption of this budget? None, none opposed. Yeah. Thank you. I'd like to thank you, Dave, for a good job in putting this together, um, working through so many of the issues that we have to deal with at budget time, looking ahead for a full year. And uh, I think there's some, I think there's some items in here that we discussed at the workshop uh, that will probably end up allowing us to finish under budget next year based on the scenarios that we think m might come together. Yep. But I think it's a great, uh, I think it was a great job pulling this together and uh, <coughs> thank you. I just want to thank you for that. Okay. Um, next item is uh, items D and E, our executive session discussions. Item D uh, is discussion uh, concerning potential lease of district property pursuant to Title I MRSA Section 4056C. We're able to discuss that in executive session. And the second item in exec executive session is for a personnel matter uh, per Title I Section 405 Main Revised Statutes Annotated. Um, so I take a motion to uh, recess to executive session. We will return to the business meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Correct. None opposed. And the uh, executive session will be held down the hall in the uh, city manager's council chamber, uh, conference room. Second motion. Second motion of bonus. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, I'd like to entertain a, another motion. A motion would be to uh, provide a bonus to the superintendent of some of three percent. Second. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? None opposed. Thank you. Next item of business is the budget summary. The 11 month budget summary is included in your packet. I recommend approval. So moved. Second. There's second. Second. Lobby. Questions or comments on the budget summary? 
We're still tracking to a uh, finishing the year under budget. Yes. And making the number that we had uh, in our uh, yep. in our budget. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're looking good to finish this year and to start 2017. All those in favor of the motion? None opposed. Uh, public comments. We have no members of the public in the audience. Any trustee comments? Nick. Um, first of all, shout out to Hayden McSorley and Benjamin Rico at the chorus tonight, along with the um, uh, Scarborough Band and Scarborough Chorus doing the Christmas concert. Kudos to them. Um, kudos to the superintendent and the crew down at the at the treatment plant. Um, another successful year. Thank you very much. I uh, want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy New Year. Building on the uh, the warm holiday wishes, uh, this week and last week have been um, uh, very momentous for a couple reasons. We had the anniversary of a very important event in this nation's history with the 75th anniversary of Pearl Harbor. We've had this week the one year anniversary of a very um, powerful loss of many children in uh, Connecticut. Um, so as we think about um, the holiday season and what it means, um, I'd like to thank, thank uh, not only uh, the members of this board for their service, but also be, gra be grateful very much for our families, for our friends, for our loved ones, for our military serving everywhere in the world and uh, hoping we can send some extra thoughts their way. Ben? I'd like to thank the staff for another successful year um, and wish everyone out there a happy holidays. Joe? I'd like to thank the superintendent uh, for making us feel welcome as I've only been here for a month um, and uh, all the employees down at the district for the same welcoming reception um, and to wish everybody a happy, safe holidays. Thank you. Rob? Uh, I'd like to uh, once again thank staff and David for the hard work that they've done this past year. Um, wish everybody a happy holiday season, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy New Year. And uh, just a shout out to Mr. Hayden McSorley. Uh, just want to let him know how proud I am of him. Jason. Uh, happy holidays to everybody out there. Again, I'd like to reiterate, reiterate thanks to Dave, the staff, everybody down at the district for another successful year. Thank you very much for everything you do. Thank you. Yeah, well, this is the end of our fiscal year and our budget year, and it's been a really exceptional year. I think everybody's done a great job. Uh, our staff is exceptional, and Dave has done a great job mentoring them and encouraging them, and we hope that will continue because, uh, you know, the, the people are what make the organization work. And... Uh, we're fortunate with the performance of all of our all of our staff and our key people. Um, I'd like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Holidays. Um, be safe and have a Happy New Year. And we'll see you see you all formally next year. I guess. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? We are adjourned. Thank you very much.